there means reverse. So let's think of building a tree. We're, we're going forward. So F, and on the top there's a B, bud, and then R, reverse. And the rule is each B right here, each B becomes this. And let's see what this is, what this means. Each B becomes minus FBR plus plus FBR minus. So each B, each bud, becomes minus F B R plus plus F or well, F B R minus. Uh, yeah. So let's run this and see how it looks. Any, anybody have questions so far? Yeah. So why are all your strings palindromes? <laughs> why are all the strings palindromes? Um, wow. They're palindromes because each side of the tree is exactly the same. That's why. <laughs> and by the way, if you don't know what a palindrome is, it means it's the same forward and backwards. Is that what it is? Right? And it makes sense because the tree is, is the same if you flip it around. So I'll run it. So the first thing is FBR, forward, bud, reverse. Do it again, and it, it says tree. There we have it. So look at this picture. And I'm going to show you this other program that I explained in my last lecture with this, other, this recursive function that says tree, and grow tree with, with the smaller size and I'll run this and lo and behold what we get is the same thing this is the Lindenmeyer system and this is the recursive function they're exactly the same so what, what does this mean like there's something deeper sort of about fractals like you can approach them from different angles and get the same thing I, I'm just fascinated by it so I'm going to move on to cellular, cellular automata now. Any, any, any questions on Lindenmeyer systems? So cellular automata, yeah. If you get the same thing, does Lindenmeyer systems hold, they have an isomorphic relationship with fractals? Yeah. So, so you're saying, uh, y your question is like? If they approach different ways, and they equal the same thing. So in those two different approaches, in some way, yes. So, so what you asked is, so you have two different approaches, and if, if they approach the same thing, are they in fact the same thing? More or less, is the question. Uh, so it is the idea that really we have two different descriptions for the same phenomenon. Yeah. Um, so to what extent are those descriptions the same? Huh. So right, I mean, it's 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 sort of mind-boggling. We have two different descriptions for the same thing. So to what extent are the descriptions the same? I mean, they're they're definitely different, but they describe the same thing. So the thing that they're describing is the same, but but they themselves are different. I mean, it's it's hard to really say. Yeah. Is it like is it sort of like describing like an object in visual terms? Say again? Like describing something as visual or audio something. Describing? Ah, OK. So he, he's sort of making the analogy to describing something in, in reality using words or using pictures or using sound or using text. So yeah, what, we're, what you're getting at in all these different descriptions is the same fundamental thing. This is the inner message, right, that Justin was talking about earlier. You have the frame message, the, the message, and the yeah. inner message. The inner message is the real meaning, the thing itself. But could also like the physical thing be like another way of describing something that more describes 
I feel like his core reality is self is like describing that. He's like, I just oh. something about describing that. <laughs> oh, man. So, he, he said, so maybe physical reality itself is just a description of something else, something else more yeah, fun. Like mathematics is also another description. Mathematics is also another description maybe of thing. Is, uh, maybe mathematics itself is the thing being described by the physical universe. I mean, it's like we have a Platonist well, on our hands. <laughs> we have a Platonist on our hands. <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of like asking the question, so, so all of these different descriptions of fractals all lead to fractals. What does it mean? Are, is the fractal itself describing something deeper? I mean, I don't know. We, we sort of get that sense, but it's like, it's so elusive. Yeah. Deeper into the fractal since it's too impressive itself. Like, Can you go deeper into the fractal? Like a definite... Like, it's it's scale-free. Yeah, it's scale-free. Yeah. The fractal itself is... Contained itself. Yeah. Yeah, the fr I mean, yeah, you can you can go into the fractal infinitely. Yeah, but like, what is it? What what are the implications of that? Like, I don't know. It's just yeah, where does it lead to? It leads to more of itself. I guess it's recursive. You know, there's no yeah. But the universe be almost affecting like in a more abstract sense because it talks about itself. It has inside itself like descriptions of itself, mathematical descriptions of itself. And a lot of times, just in cases, we also get a fraction in more abstract. Could the universe be a fractal in a more abstract sense? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just have to put in there because before he had like kind of a quantum mechanical version of the atom. What we used to say is like, well. Here's the nucleus, and here are the electrons, all right? And of course, I could have said, instead of nucleus, here's the sun, and here, and here are the planets. So in this sense, now, once again, I mean, this, this model isn't right, but what we used to have, this kind of self-similarity across scales, is that you know, if we zoomed in far enough from our solar system and went from the solar system and just kind of kept micro just telescoping in and in and in and in visually until we got to a length scale on the level of atoms, I, I, would, I could replace this and it would look exactly the same. And I would say, well, this is the nucleus and here are the electrons. Of course, this isn't exactly right, but What's interesting is that a lot of physical phenomena, I mean, and this, this is a very kind of deep experiment, is that, and I know Curran talked about this a little bit, but if you take a mountain, and you look at the shape of a mountain, that's kind of this crinkled, fractally thing, and then you take a piece of paper, and you crumble it up, and then unfold it, the geomorphology of a paper is almost exactly the same as a mountain and the landscape around it. So in some senses, there's a self-similarity in laws, in conceptual laws, between the forces that govern the shaping of mountains and valleys and rivers and the forces behind me crumbling up this piece of paper. And also, in biology, it's very, it's so inspiring in biology. You see these patterns at different levels, on different scales, and they're all the same. They all share something. So, I mean, biology, like yourself, like your own body, is, is definitely a fractal in some sense. It, not infinitely, but, but there's all these... It's, yeah? Would it be like the thing itself or the way it's described? Ooh. So, Latif said, could it be the thing itself or the way that we describe the thing? So then that fundamentally boils down into which do you think is realer? The pendulum or the equation describing the pendulum? It's like a chicken and egg 